Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. So today we are going to begin working on the stem for this uh, Royal Ascot Supreme uh, Stummel. And I have taken the um, long rod that I showed you in the last video and sawed off a piece that is um, approximately 3 and 5 eighths long. I, I cut that on the bandsaw. Uh, the reason for that length is that we want to keep the stem in proportion to the stummel. And the, the stummel, I mean, it's difficult to measure exactly, but we're talking about roughly a, a 3 inch uh, distance from the end to the, from end to end here. And so we'd like this to extend out about three, three inches. And I know that the tenon is going to have to be about five-eighths of an inch. So <clears throat> we're, we're shooting for a three-inch stem when we're done, and that'll keep everything nice and in proportion. So we're going to move this over to the lathe and uh, do all the kind of work that you've seen in my, uh, my lathe video uh, that, I, that I put up. And I'll, I'll show some of that, but I'll probably edit it quite heavily just, to, just for the, in the interest of time. So let's go ahead and uh, form the tenon on this, get it drilled out, and uh, we'll be back soon. Okay, so we've begun by uh, facing off both sides of the, the rod so that there, it's a, a flat surface to begin working on. And the first thing we want to do is center drill it and then go in with a pilot bit and so on. Okay, so that is now drilled all the way through, and the next step is going to be to drill for the filter. And we can of course begin by using the, the hole that we already have. Okay, so I've got a, this is actually the pilot drill that I use for a 6mm filter. We're just going to run that in to start widening out our hole. And I've marked those off to one inch because I want a one inch depth for the filter. This is our final drill bit for the filter. And this bit measures, it's a letter drill. And I'm sorry, I don't remember the letter. I'll, I'll, I'll look it up later and let you know later in the video. But it's a letter drill and it is um, it measures out to be about 8.1 millimeters, which is actually the diameter of a 9 millimeter filter. 
I don't know why they're not called 8.1 millimeter filters. And that should do it for the filter. And I have here a test filter. And that goes in there quite snugly. So, perfect. Okay, so the next thing is going to be to turn the shank, uh, the tenon rather, down to diameter. And we want our tenon to be 5 eighths long. So we will mark out 5 eighths. You can see that mark. Bring a turning tool into that point. Set the carriage stop. Very good. So I'm using auto feed. Uh, I've found that the auto feed actually makes a much nicer surface finish. Not surprising. But it really cuts down on the amount of sanding. I, I didn't realize it was going to be that dramatic a difference. And the only catch is you have to watch for when the feed needs to be stopped. Otherwise the lathe complains a bit. that first pass at a low speed just to sort of get my measurements correct and make sure that everything was working properly. continue with this and I will bring you back once I have the tenon fitting properly. Okay, so we now have the stone uh, fitting to the, to the tenon and it's a, it's a nice relatively tight flush fit. We can adjust that 
uh, more as, as we go along as well. But uh, right now it's, it's, it's a pretty good fit. It fits flush up against this shoulder, so we're, we're happy we're going to have a, you know, the, the right fit here. But of course the problem is that we need, to, uh, we need to reduce the diameter of the stem to match the diameter of the stubble. So oh, I hope my hand wasn't in the way the whole time there. <laughs> So that's going to be the next thing that we do. Now, I, I can't turn this with the pipe in place. That would be ideal if I could, but it risks the pipe flying off, and uh, also it may hit the, the ways of the lathe. So what I will have to do is, is just remove it, make light passes, and, and repeatedly check for the fit until we get pretty close to where we want to be, and we'll do the rest with hand sanding. So I'm going to do that, and uh, when I'm all done, I will bring you back uh, off the lathe and show you uh, what we're dealing with. All right, folks, well, the lathe work is done, and uh, hopefully this is a shot that will uh, get the Durham Duke excited about his, uh, his pipe, because we have a stem blank attached now. So the blank uh, fits quite well. I mean, it's, it's basically a, a light, tight fit with the stummel, and that's always a problem when you're replacing a stem, uh, because the stems are often made to fit the stummel while it's still unfinished and can be sanded and stuff so it, it may not necessarily be a perfectly concentric fit uh, between the, the the drilling of the hole and the exterior of the stummel may not be perfectly concentric but in this case it, it seems to be pretty close now there is um, a bit of a, a ridge still I don't know if you can see that or not but the stummel is a little bit smaller diameter than the, the stem, and that's intentional. Uh, I wanted to uh, leave something to sand off, so we'll, we'll sand that to the final fit. The fit itself is, is quite good uh, in the, you know, it, it's, it's a good tight friction fit in the stummel. The tenon holds the filter quite nicely, uh, so I think all in all we're in good shape. Uh, one thing I worry about with this, and uh, I, I'll just say this so the Durham Duke can be aware of it, is that when you make this a 6mm filter stem, this the walls of this tenon are really quite thin. I don't think they're going to break um, unless, you know, you, you were to apply some significant sideways pressure to this, but this is a case where it would not be too difficult to snap the stem off and leave the tenon behind. Um, of course, if that happens uh, to the Durham Duke, he, he knows somebody that can repair it. So. Uh, but I, I think th there's no way around that, basically. Uh, well, the only thing we could do is we could drill the stummel out further, but then you're going to wind up with uh, weakening the walls and potentially creating a crack in the stummel, which is even worse. So I, I think that in order to make this pipe work for him the way he wants it, this is, this is what we're going to have to do. And, you know, acrylic is a tough material. I don't think it's going to be a problem, but it's just something to watch for. Uh, and, and to be particularly careful not to push on the stem one way or the other. If you're having difficulty getting the stem out, you want to put it in the freezer for a bit and shrink it. To, you know, all, all the things you you should really do with any pipe, but uh, you want to be particularly careful with with this one because of the thinness of the walls of this tenon. Okay, so we're we're ready for the next stage now. So. That's going to be an awful lot of sanding and filing and, and stuff. I will use the belt sander initially to uh, just bring this end down and, and sort of angled. Um, and I'll, I'll map out, you've seen me tape up these before and, and map out where everything's going to go. Uh, yeah, so that'll, that'll take a little bit of time and I'll bring you back once I've got the, the blank sort of roughed in, where the, the, the sanding is, is mostly done. Uh, but before we start the final shaping of the, the stem and the button. All right, so we've done uh, more work on this. Uh, you can see that we took this over to the belt sander and used the belt sander to uh, bring, begin the shape, begin to refine the shape. Uh, so this will be the button end, obviously. Uh, the, the slot is underneath there. Uh, obviously this is a lot thicker than it will be in the end, but we're beginning to, to refine it. Uh, and at this point, we've completed all of the machining work. This will be, uh, from here on out, it's going to be all hand filing and sanding. You'll notice uh, this has changed. So, uh, the more I thought about it, I, I realized that the acrylic tenon that I showed you in the last segment really was just too fragile uh, to, to be used. And I decided to eliminate that and use some Delrin. So this is a piece of Delrin that actually is sunk into the stem about five-eighths of an inch. 
and then turned down to the size of the tenon and drilled out uh, to the appropriate size. So essentially this will be just like the, the, the integral tenon was, uh, except it's made out of Delrin, which is a tougher material. It has a bit more give to it, and where the acrylic will crack, the Delrin will bend. Uh, and it's, it's a lot slicker, so it, will, it, it makes a very nice, um, very nice tenon material. And it's used by a lot of pipe makers just by way of, uh, yeah, that's what they use. They don't even try to turn tenons out of vulcanite or, or acrylic, they just use Delrin. Uh, I prefer not to when I, when I can, but uh, in this case I think it's a fine material to use for this tenon and uh, you know obviously it'll be invisible when the pipe's assembled and it will certainly be more uh, a more reliable part to the pipe uh, than the acrylic would have originally been. So we got the shape started here. The next thing is going to be to start to refine the button and then just a whole heck of a lot of sanding and, and uh, filing. So I'll show you how I, I mark off the button and that is you know, really pretty simple but uh, I'm going to use this this black sharpie on the top here just to, to show you how this works. Normally I wouldn't do this but it'll it'll show up better and of course this is all going to be filed away so it doesn't really matter um, that I, I blacken it up a bit. And now what I've done is I've taken a pair of calibers, I've got them set to an eighth inch, and that's the um, the depth of the button that I want to make. I want it to be one eighth inch from fore to, to aft. So I'll now take those calipers and use them to etch a line. He says. There we go. So that line is roughly one eighth of an inch across now. And now I can use that as a starting point for uh, filing. And I will do the same on the other side. Um, and this will give me a place to begin to file. And I'll use a variety of files um, that have safe edges so I, I can sort of define that 90 degree angle where the button meets the stem. I'll get that cut in, get it to its final thickness, and that'll be really the reference point for shaping the rest of the stem. So I'll go ahead and do that and I will bring you back after I've uh, done some more shaping and, and probably when I'm closer to the to the final product. And here we have the, uh, the stem in what is close to its final form. Uh, we obviously still, we haven't buffed this at all. There's lots of scratches. I may do a little bit more shaping on it, but the idea here was to have a, a relatively thick um, bulky stem with a bend to it. Obviously it hasn't been bent yet. Um, but the work is, is largely done. The slot's been cut. Um, and ignore the fact that there's a lot of, uh, of acrylic dust in, in various places that'll all clean up. Uh, the button has been, has been cut and, and uh, filed to its final dimensions. And as I mentioned previously, we had to tape off the stampings here and do a little bit of sanding that cut into the stumble, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll be able to, to uh, clean that up as we refinish the pipe. Um, and you know, we're relatively close to a, to a good fit here. Your fingernail catches a little bit, uh, but it's about as close as you can get with a replacement stem. So I'm pretty happy with this. I think this is going to look really nice once it's all buffed up and once the, uh, the pipe is refinished. I, I think that this choice of stem material by the Durham Duke was really a great one. So we are going to end this video here. Uh, there will be a little bit more work on the stem just in terms of, of, uh, of, of cleaning it up, you know, getting, getting the scratches out and buffing it and all of that, but that's fairly routine work. Uh, so we'll do that off screen and we will begin the, uh, the work on the stummel, the uh, removing of the old finish and application of the new finish. And we'll bring the pipe uh, back together with the, uh, the new stem all in the next video. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you all for watching. If you're a subscriber, thank you for that. Uh, if you are enjoying this series and you're not a subscriber, please click subscribe so that you can uh, stay up to date on this series and the other uh, pipe restoration series that, that I'm working on. So beyond that, I thank you all for watching and I will look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now.